Hey guys, this is Mike. Welcome back to Fright Flicks and Killer Theories for MTV Scream. On this episode, we're going to be doing episode 4, Happy Birthday to Me. Like all the episode titles this season, this one is based on a movie from the 80s. This one is based on, of course, Happy Birthday to Me, which is a slasher movie from the 80s. So that's pretty nice. Pretty nice call out right there. And if you haven't seen this particular Fright Flick, I would definitely suggest checking it out. It's a good whodunit. Um, yeah, I'm not going to say much more. Just check it out. Happy birthday to me. Check that one out. This episode was written by a guy named Brian C.V. Uh, I guess I'm saying that right. He is known for writing the sequels, both sequels, to the movie Boogeyman. He wrote Boogeyman 2 and 3. Um, and he also wrote an episode of MTV's Teen Wolf, so we can see why he got hired for this job. And what is pretty cool to me, this episode is directed by Daniel Stom, who I guess, again, saying that right, terrible with names, you guys know this by now. Uh, but Daniel directed uh, a movie called 13 Sins, which I haven't seen yet. I don't know if that's worth watching. I know that it's a remake of a, believe it's Japanese, you know, movie. But he directed The Last Exorcism, which is a movie that I personally have a lot of love for. I like that movie. That's one of the few found footage and definitely one of the few exorcism movies that I enjoy. The ending aside, everybody who has problems with that movie usually has to do with the ending. Um, I kind of have problems with the, that movie's ending, but overall, I like it. So knowing that he directed this episode, I was like, all right, sweet, here we go. This episode is they're already kind of breaking their little tradition that I thought that they, at least they were starting with uh, each episode beginning where the last one left off. That didn't happen on this one. Uh, we begin with Audrey not in her car looking at the corkscrew, but she's in a field, pretty random field, uh, burying said corkscrew, which, um, yeah, I don't know if this stuck out to anybody else, but, you know, she kind of has a stalker and been pretty much everywhere she ever goes type stuff. So what is it that makes her think that the motherfucker isn't watching her from the bushes? Um, as it turned out, about one, two scenes later, it go ahead and goes ahead and points that out itself and is like, oh, well, guess what, Audrey, I was watching. It's like to the surprise of absolutely fucking nobody. But, you know, it's all good, and we'll get to that scene here in a second when we get to it. Um, but anyway, what we get first is Kieran gets killed, bom, bom, bom. like we all knew, like we saw it in the trailer, and like I said last episode, this ended up being a dream sequence, again, to the surprise of nobody. Um, it didn't go down quite as like overly dramatic as I thought it would, with the whole, like, Kieran, turn around, E E B I. what is the baby then? So it actually went by really quickly, and yeah, not one person out there was you know surprised that it ended up being a dream. Um, so Emma, we then cut out and we see Emma's doing her little thing in her dream journal, which, um, there was a quick shot of it and I have it for you guys right here. So I'm going to read for you what exactly that said. This is Emma's dream blog. So it says, I see a shadow out in the hall. I try to warn Kieran. He doesn't understand me. Then it's too late. Out of nowhere, the killer is there right behind him. Kieran, the weirdest expression on his face. The knife goes into Kieran's back. Then Kieran's breathing is like a something, like the knife cut through his lung. I ran, ran still had, in, the, I ran still something in the dream. I want to scream, but nothing comes out. The killer just stares at me. I stare back and do nothing period. Nothing. Period. Okay. So, anyway. Crazy Emma's dream journal. Don't really know what to make of that. Who really cares at this point? You know, this old dream thing is going to keep coming up, basically, is all they're letting us know right off the bat here. Um, so then we cut to a scene where Audrey wakes up, and she's all like, oh, it's such a beautiful morning, and then boom, something like scrapes her against her leg. Very dramatic. And I don't even think it's like whip the covers back and we see the... Um, corkscrew i think they even make us like wait like we're supposed to be fucking surprised by what's down there so it's like she gets up she looks and her legs all like cut up and shit and then she's like oh my god and like slow as fuck like pulls the uh sheets out of the way and it's like oh my god it's corkscrew and then she gets like a text and it's like ah, i was watching you from the bushes <laughs> it's like oh god 
Uh, but the one thing about that that's a little bit um, worth mentioning, just upping the stakes a bit, is now the killer is sneaking into um, Audrey's room. Uh, we'll get into maybe a little bit of that later, but at the same time, what the fuck, I'll bring it up now. Um, this is just a theory. It's been floating around. I'm not going to give too much thought into this. Um, it has to do with something kind of Eli's talking about later. But basically, it comes down to that Audrey has like split personality, that she's being her own stalker out of guilt. I don't know. Whatever. I guess that's possible. It's as possible as the whole Eli having split personality thing, which I mean I'll touch on a little bit more later, but basically it's like, am I the only one that thinks that if they do end up doing that, and I don't know if they're actually going to, but if they do go down that road, uh, they're kind of playing it heavy-handed. He has that part where he's like, he got his like McLovin fake ID, and he's like, sometimes I just enjoy being another person. Womp, 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 womp. So is Audrey really the one stalking herself? This is very high concept. This is all very silly. Doesn't mean they won't do it. I don't know. These are new showrunners. We'll have to see. We're only episode four into 14 now, so could happen. Anyways, pretty quickly after that, we learned that the happy birthday to me of this episode is actually Kieran's birthday, which is strange. Huh. Who would have thought that Kieran had birthdays? You know what I mean? Mr. Tough Guy. Anyway, so it's going to be Kieran's birthday. Now, that was the first indication to me. I was like, oh shit, Kieran might die. You know, maybe not just in this episode, but he might die overall. Giving him a birthday and stuff like that. Like, oh, that's pretty, that's pretty intense. Um, I'm joking, by the way. But anyway, um... So then that scene is very quickly cut down to nothing and we get more Emma and her mother and her father fighting drama. I'm just going to go right past this because nobody gives a shit and we probably already fast forward through it while watching it. So no point in talking about it here. Um, then we get Kieran and Eli. Kieran is being a dick and Eli is being all weird and cryptic and it's like you shouldn't be going out at night. This town is really good to me. Blah, 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 blah. Who knows? Who cares? Um, one thing that I thought was pretty interesting in this episode, and I watched it, eh, whatever, a few times, and they could have possibly just been using this close-up as a way of, like, none of the, you know, they basically just had, like, two bits of coverage, like, they had Eli's, um, coverage shot, basically, and then they had Kieran's shot, and if neither of those takes, like, were any good, maybe that's why they cut to this, uh, close-up, but I don't know. I usually tend to think that uh, close-ups are meant to convey information. That's what they do, That specifically their point. And so there is a close-up of Kieran's bag. And I noted that, and it didn't crop up later in this episode. So just remember Kieran's bag. Uh, when it crops up again, you'll be like, Oh my God, I remember back in that one episode, this is Kieran's bag. Why? Because there was a close-up. Anyway, just something to keep in mind. Um, why get a close-up of Kieran's bag? These are things to keep in mind. And then, holy shit, because we got a whole episode last week without having to deal with it, we now get to deal with Brooke and her dad drama again. This scene, there really isn't much talk about. Her dad ends up being a little bit more of the plot in this episode than he was in the last couple, whatever, episodes. But um, they bring up the Lady of the Lake pageant again. Um, the dad is all sketchy because he's like, well, if you show up with somebody like Jake, then you're never going to get this, blah, blah, blah. Um, but as we all know, Jake's already dead, and what? who cares? If it was the, the dad's too bulky, and the dad's a boring idea, and the dad's going to tie in later, um, as we find out with Gustav, uh, or the sheriff, and um, Emma's dad. Uh, whole subplot being set up there. Anyway, so he says some really like, little sketchy things, then he takes off. Brooke texts the killers, the killer texts back, I'll see you later. Um, which they do, holy shit. Um, so anyway, uh... Emma goes to the grindhouse, Eli says he's applying for a job there, and this is one of the silliest fucking things I've seen in the show pull in a while, is that she's like, or Eli's like, so you're throwing a party for Kieran? And she's like, no, Kieran said he didn't want to do anything, he just wants to spend time with me, which is totally in Kieran's personality, and this motherfucker Eli's like, no, come on, you know that Kieran would never say that he wanted a party but if we know anything about Kieran, he always wants parties and people to pay attention to him. And he's not actually a brooding loner. And Emma just buys it. She's like, oh my God, you're so right. He totally would be that kind of guy who wants a sweet 16 party. I'm like, calling fucking bullshit on that. But um, anyway, so not only does he convince her like real fucking quick to throw a party, he then 
gets her to throw it at her house and he's like don't worry i'll bring the alcohol and pulls on his fake id which i mentioned that earlier and he's like i like being somebody else and i'm the oldest 23 year old and blah 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 um so yeah he's just moving in on that sh real quick karen you better watch your back uh I'm not trying to get stabbed oh karen got stabbed in the back this episode see jesus christ i wonder i seriously do like we call that visual uh, that's a visual metaphor for this entire episode. Oh, God. Okay, then we cut to study hall, and it's Emma and Brooke and Audrey. They're all studying. Gustav's being a creeper from across the room. Go figure. Gustav the creeper being a creeper. Um, Audrey starts asking all types of questions about him. She leaves. She pulls the fire alarm. Pretty, pretty slick thing to do there, Audrey. And the teacher specifically is like, everybody leave your stuff and we'll all go out into the hall she sneaks back in she looks through his stuff and he's like really good artist who's drawing pictures of everybody but he draws like really fucking like macabre ass pictures of uh emma she's all like cut up and bloody and like all this kind of stuff so it's like my god if this guy couldn't be last season's kieran who's just like oh my god it has to be him and this episode went way way out of its way pointing to him like Unless they're trying to play some kind of card, like, make it the most obvious person. Yeah, it's definitely not Gustav, because, my goodness, this episode really pinned uh, pinned the mask on him, didn't it? Uh, literally, by the end. But then we get a kind of interesting scene where the sheriff comes in, and the sheriff, it turns out, uh, the sheriff and Brooke's dad, Brooke's dad hired him because they were childhood friends, working in with the whole Kevin thing. Um, blah, blah, blah. So, basically, he's the one who hired him, got him into his position so he can look out for him okay so this is interesting enough i guess just because it involves the sheriff even though i don't care for the two dads the sheriff seems pretty good no the sheriff's a dad too go figure um but anyway there's is the first time that the line and it's used maggie uses it later it's like play savior um he uses it uh brooks dad uses it towards the sheriff you get to play savior again and emma's mom uses it against kevin later so I guess this is hinting towards the idea that, like, um, they were the two who discovered that it was, quote-unquote, Brandon James, as everyone says, um, and were able to, like, save everybody, you know? So I feel that that's where this is heading, and we're going to get this whole, like, subplot to make up for these 14 episodes of the adults, you know, and maybe some Brandon James flashbacks. Oh, gosh. I would hope. Come on. This is what the whole thing started about. Let's get a little bit of that in this season already but just something to keep in mind playing savior uh emma's dad the sheriff and just basically the four grown-ups and then now crazy and i counted it 11 minutes into the episode noah finally shows up we had to sit through 11 fucking minutes of this show without noah anyway he shows up he talks to zoe it's all cute and everything uh and invites her to this party blah 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 it's a bunch of setup um and so Emma's over on the other side of the parking lot. She's talking to Kieran. Kieran drives away. She jumps right. This is like John Hughes movie. No, John Hughes was much better than this. But jumps right into Eli's car after talking to him and like smile and ride off in his um, uh, convertible. Which didn't they say in episode what like two that Eli and his mom are like trashy and they you know don't have any money types. And he's driving around in like a new uh mustang and even if it isn't a new model uh you know he's driving around a convertible mustang it's like kiss my ass unless they say he steals that kind of stuff which i could see but even still it's like whatever that is not what i pictured eli'd be riding the bus with his little creeper ass okay and then sheriff out looking for jake want 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 nothing really much going on there we'll find him by the end of this episode oh you trust me there okay and then we start getting into the real meat of this episode which is the party which starts with eli and emma setting everything up and they do this uh, like half fake kiss type thing it's just, i'm just sorry this is pissing me off one i fucking hate eli two who cares about emma um and three like i said i'm starting to like kieran more and doing this right behind his back like setting up for his party and they're gonna try and pull this teen drama bullshit i'm like nope i ain't standing for it scream none of this stuff this episode like mm -mm -mm -mm. let's just move past this um i didn't miss 
there was this cute little thing that Brooke said. She was like, oh, you two co-conspirators. Yeah, I didn't miss that. I don't think it's anything. If it is, oh, can you imagine? Ugh. But that, like I said, that would be one interesting thing to be able to do with Emma being that she's not, like, relevant to anything anymore. Make her the killer, kill her off. Mm, makes sense to me. I'd watch that. Um, so anyway, then, Brooke comes up. And, like, this is one of the crazier things that this episode pulled. But it's all good. Um, that the killer leaves everyone tequila. And, like, Eli even specifically is like, oh, my God, that's because his mom's, like, an alcoholic and he's a fucking uh, expert on alcohol. Uh, he's like, that's, like, $300 bottle of alcohol right there. So it's like, okay, we all know where this episode went, you know. I'm not ruining anything by telling you that it ends up having, like, some kind of peyote or some kind of crazy Indian worshipping drugs out in the desert drug thing. Anyway, so it's laced with that. But at the same time, why does the killer have to use a $300 bottle? You know, it's like, damn, this killer's pretty, this killer, this killer might be an asshole. He might be a stalker. He might be Noah. Uh, he might be Karen. He might be a lot of things, but I'll tell you something. This killer, more than any other killer I've ever seen, this killer knows how to party. Not only is he supplying all of his victims with $300 tequila, he's lacing that shit with peyote, having him trip out. I don't know pretty smart that's pretty if you're gonna get stalked and murdered by somebody might as well be the uh one who knows how to party am i right we got the frat boy killer going on this time all right jumping ahead the party starts this was kind of cool because if nothing else is we got to see emma drunk i don't think we've ever seen emma like have any shades really to her character other than like sad depressed feeling like she got screwed over by somebody and cheater um so to see her drunk that was kind of cool but they didn't really do anything with it um and if you're keeping track of the shots, and I'm sure somebody kept better track than I did, um, you don't actually ever see Zoe or Noah take the shot. Now, the whole thing is, is like, maybe somebody replaced theirs, a da 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 There's no way of knowing this. Um, and this brings me to my big kind of like overall point of this episode. This episode, as good as it was, and I did like this episode, and I'll get into that later. Um, this episode is totally filler. And that's fine because if you're going to make thriller as a filler, uh, as long as you make it entertaining, that's fine with me. And hell, this was probably one of the most entertaining episodes of Scream that we've gotten thus far. Um, really just cool ass tricks going this way and that. But, um, the, uh, thing is, is like, there's so much that just basically after this point and debatably before now and debatably after but totally this party this episode is called the nothing is actually relevant episode because it can all be like oh you they were tripping they were tripping this is so there's really like not much that can be said as far as killer theories on this episode plus it's only episode four and i mean i'm still going to make final killer theory for this episode uh, at the end, but like, you know, for the most part, like all this stuff just got really screwed up and screwy. So don't put too much stock into figuring out who was where at this point, who was taking shots. And it, was, it was just the way it's like, let's have some fun. Let's throw in a f uh, filler episode and whatever. I'm fine with that sometimes. Okay. Which brings us to the awesome stuff about it is like everybody's trip out sequence. Now I'm not going to go out and point to specific things, but like this was by far like the coolest directed episode just because of how much trip out stuff there is. Like it starts with Brooke and the water like pauses and then Gustav's tattoos start moving. Um, and then of course, like my personal favorite, I'll just jump ahead to it is like, I'm a big nerd for this kind of stuff. So I notice it is aspect ratio is the show is always shot in 16 by nine, which is, you know, the basically the uh, rectangle that TV's, you know, just off square. Uh, and it went into the 235, which is like the movie theater scope. Two, uh, yeah, 235 to 16 by 9. Anyway, so it did that. And the scene where sh uh, she's like, uh, where Brooke is in the bed and uh, he's rubbing her feet. And then um, Jake shows up. And Jake actually like grabs the black frame and stuff that was very cool and then if you watch the next scene where they open the door to let kieran into his room the door swipe is what takes it back to its original aspect ratio that's the kind of stuff that i just love i thought this was really cool and there was a whole bunch of really cool trip out stuff like uh audrey's one where like everything started turning like gray and blodge or, or like very very cool and the side effect of that one was really interesting but just to get back on plot real quick 
is that Kieran has this moment where he starts talking about Eli and him when they were little kids and like a dog went missing in their neighborhood and when it got returned it was killed. I don't know. That was kind of hard to make out exactly what he was saying, but I'm pretty sure that was the gist of it. Um, that it, Eli was at least around when a neighborhood dog got killed. So if nothing else, Kieran thinks that's what kind of person he is. I don't know. We'll see. Um, so yeah, then the Brooke and Jake thing, very, very cool. Um, so then, yeah, it's Audrey. She trips out and it's really cool because she sees Rachel again. So we had Return of Rachel. That's pretty cool to me. I would much rather, if there, somebody was going to come back from the first season, of course I'd like to see Piper come back, at least in a dream sequence type thing or a flashback because, you know, that's always good times. But Rachel, that was really cool to bring her back because they brought her back all like fucking day. Uh, like dead eyes and fucking the new still hanging, you know. Very cool. I like to see, like, ghostly apparitions. Very cool. Um, so anyway, they start kissing. Turns out that it's Noah. Get some, dog. And then uh, not only is Zoe not, like, I mean, I guess they're all tripping, which, again, is debatable. But um, so they're all tripping, and she, like, doesn't get mad at the whole thing. She just, like, goes into it. So it's, like, three-way kiss thing. And I was pretty, as a fan of the show, I got to say that was, you know, that's one way to get me is, like, uh, I don't know, old school ploy but two characters kissing i can't help but still get a few giggles and juggles out of that especially when it becomes three with but uh anyway um so right after that emma starts having her little trip out and she chases this chubby little girl out into the woods i don't know if that's supposed to be emma when she was younger and i know the whole baby fat thing but i mean if it doesn't end up being emma that she's chasing around these dreams i would not be surprised because the little girl is kind of chubby is that a mean thing to say whatever um anyway so she follows this little chubby kid out into the woods and the killer attacks now again we can't trust that it was actually the killer who knows who cares whatever but i will say this it's very rare that in these movies especially scream because of that long flowing coat but in this one that we see the killer run and holy shit that's why i almost don't trust this because that killer held ass uh but anyway so i thought that was pretty cool and it supports my whole like kieran uh thing uh, even though he was supposedly tripping out, whatever, who cares? Like I said, we can't trust anything in this episode, who, whatever. But that was just one thing that I thought was pretty damn cool, is to see that killer hauling ass through the woods at her. And I was like, please, killer, please, oh, Jesus, please. And then, nope, not only does she not get killed, her dad shows up to shave her. I'm like, ah, wah, wah, wah. And then it's the whole, you guys believe me, right? Will you guys believe me? Why didn't anybody believe me? Because you're fucking drunk. <sighs> God, I hate you so much, Emma. It's nothing against the actors, but Emma, oh my God, you're so lame. I was on hallucinogens and nobody believes, but I saw this. Why don't you guys support me? Blah, 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 blah. Anyway, so just Emma being Emma again. Okay, so yeah, Sheriff comes in. He interrogates everybody. Everybody then goes away. Emma's mom finally, this is very uh, nice timing. She finally comes back into town. Now, do I think it could be Daisy? Absolutely, I do. Daisy's actually my pick for like overall killer. And I'll tell you why. Because uh, things really like to be slick and be able to be like, I told you from the very beginning. And in Nina's Kill from the very beginning, uh, right after, I believe it's right after Nina gets her throat cut, she's thrown in, the cell phone rings and it says mom. And that's the first time we see the scream mask. Like it says mom. And then the scream mask tilts up towards the camera and scream. That seriously, uh, other than, you know, being tied to the back, you know, old school stuff and that, that but that is one of my big indicators that it's going to be her overall just because like they gotta love the visual whatever of that be like we told you from the very beginning we said mom and then showed you the scream mask we're geniuses um so anyway she shows up finally in this episode and is like um oh blah 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 i wasn't here and i for probably forgot to fucking tell you something but we'll find that out next episode and i'm holding withholding information and blah 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 um but she specifically says, oh, you arrived just in time to play Savior again. And he's like, what's that supposed to mean? And she's like, nothing. And Emma's like, no, Mom, seriously, what did that mean? And she's like, nothing. So she won't say. Uh, and remember, Brooke's dad said that earlier. So this this whole thing that him, uh, her dad and Gustav's dad, the sheriff, uh, played Savior back in the day. This is definitely going to be a thing coming up uh, later in the series. So then we move on to... The sheriff goes into Gustav's place because I believe Audrey is like, your son's drawing crazy pictures. 
he goes in there and finds a Brandon James mask. Uh, I've got a Brandon James mask myself, and one, that points him way too obviously to be the killer, and two, that does not look like a legit Brandon James mask. Like I said, I have one that I bought for like five dollars off this dude at a Halloween shop, um, and it looks about the same quality, so that isn't a real Brandon James mask. He's going to be like, Dad, I don't know what you're talking about. I bought it. I'm going to get check out now, and she just makes my own Pinterest. Uh, and that's going to be resolved pretty quickly. Either that or um, someone planted it, but who knows? Who cares? We'll find out very quickly in the next episode what the deal is with that. Unless, uh, very truthfully, it could end up going into TV drama, which is like the dad just won't mention it and won't mention it. And it ends up being the elephant in the room. It's the mask under the bed. Um, but anyway, hopefully they don't go that route and he just like, ask him about it in which case like i said he's just mad dead i don't know it's not mine um and it's going to play like the whole drug metaphor um anyway so then just trying to wrap everything up pretty quickly um noah goes and talks to zoe and he's like hey no zoe you want to go out with me and she's like and she turns him down that i didn't uh expect even just little things that i don't expect to happen in an episode thank you just something. I expect her to be like, oh my god, it's great, and we're just going to hug and kiss all the time. And it's gonna... But she's like, no, you're still in love with your gay best friend. And I'm not, I'm, I think that might be the first time anyone in the show's actually, like, said about Audrey, like, she's gay. You know? I think people always, like, pitter-patter around that whole thing, but she's just like, you're gay best friend, and you have a hard on for her, and I'm not getting in the middle of that, so I'll see you later there, cardigan guy. And just leaves him standing there in the middle of the, um, which... If he's a killer, you better watch your ass, Zoe. And then whatever, skip to the end. Uh, Zoe's up for the Lady in the Lake, Lady in the Lake, whatever, pageant thing. So is Brooke. Everyone's like, oh my god, Zoe must be the killer because, you know, she's going to want to win this Lady of the fucking Lake thing uh, against Brooke, so she's willing to kill him, whatever. Uh, so they all go up on stage, eat and scream. <laughs> And Jake's fucking dead ass body falls down. So, anybody out there who was saying, oh, Jake's still alive and didn't you see his eyes moving? He doesn't look decomposed enough and all this kind of stuff, blah, blah, blah. He looked pretty damn decomposed for one. And two, he hit that stage pretty damn hard. Uh, and look at his eyes and his guts hanging out everywhere. Yeah, Jake's dead. And the big thing about this is that now everybody knows that Jake's dead. Everybody knows that Jake is dead. And now for the first time... This is very easy to slip by. It slipped by me. That now everybody knows that there's a killer. Before the end of this episode, when Jake's body just came, bloop, bloop, uh, basically right out onto her, which this is weird. As decomposed as he is, that was really fresh, bud. But whatever, these are nitpicks. Um, anyway, so now everyone knows that there's a killer. Now you know, game on, basically. So now people can start getting killed a lot because the reason we weren't getting a lot of kills is because the killer would still have to hide it, which is why you kill people like uh, Adrian, Adrian Kruger, whatever, um, the hotel guy. Um, so now everybody knows there's a killer. Now we know Jake is dead. Um, everybody's still a suspect. Gustav is, of course, the main one um, for this episode. But, I mean, I still like him. I like Kieran as killer, and I like Daisy as killer. And you might say, well, if Kieran was the killer, um, why did he, like, get all tripped up in the tequila? Doesn't have to be the same person. Doesn't have to be the same person at all. Could be Gustav who decided to do that kind of thing. Uh, he seemed to know a lot about all of this kind of thing. Um, although I do think it is pretty well stated. Yeah, because he says it's from Jake. So it pretty much has to be the killer, one of the killers, who delivered that tequila. But anyway, um, one thing that I think is kind of cool is, like, because nobody actually got, like, murdered and potentially Emma wasn't even really attacked in this episode. So it's very potential that the killer didn't even know he was being given a shot of this stuff. So, like, the killer's plan was to get everyone fucked up and accidentally got fucked up himself. I don't know. I think that's pretty funny. I think that's kind of cool. Um, so, as far as killer theories, like I said, I'm just going to stick with Kieran for no other reason than this is the episode where I really don't think you can trust almost anything that happened. Um, and it was a filler episode, so I really don't think the mystery got 
too much further developed. Um, so yeah, I'm going to stick with Kieran as my final. Go ahead and pick yours, put it below, and I think that pretty much does it for this week. Um, I will see you next week with episode 5, which is called, if I'm not jumping ahead too much, Cheapers Creepers, I believe is what it's called. So, stick with me, stick with MTV Scream, and I will see you next week for my review and killer theories on episode 5. Later on, guys. 5. Later on, guys. 5. Later on, guys. 5. Later on, guys.